and we'll let you know so you're good to go. Good afternoon. Welcome. This is the uh, Conservation Commission meeting for the town of New Canaan. It is 1.02. And we will start the meeting with uh, a roll call. Um, Susan Schweitzer? Here. Linda Andrew? Here. And Sylvia? Here. John Fusen? Here. Chris Schiffer? Here. Uh, full house. Good news. <laughs> uh, move, motion to approve. The uh, meeting minutes of October 12, 2023. I move to approve the meeting minutes October 12th. I second. Discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you, Susan. Great uh, minutes again. Um, I don't. I'll be a marker on my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> I said that will be a marker on my tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> Mine will be, I never want to have to do minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It's good. Um, I don't know whether Robin Bates Mason will be in to update us on uh, silver, certification, silver certification update, but um, I can quickly walk us through the Bristol Bird and Wildwood Preserve um, storyline. Not to spend too much time, I think we're all pretty familiar with it. Um, September 8th is a celebration. Uh, phase four plans have gone up, been bid, been adjusted, and are now um, in planning for when can the job start. And it's probably either late winter or early spring. The goal, of course, is to have the work done well before uh, September 8th. And that would include um, uh, a walkway coming down. Uh, Park Street to Old Stanford Road. Uh, the big oak tree has been milled. But they haven't. They haven't concluded the crossing, right? No. Yeah. No, they're still working on the whole survey going all the way down the Old Stanford Road to Gower. That's and that, uh, according to Tiger's last update, may not be or is unlikely to be finished by the time the park opens in, uh, you know, celebrates its centennial. Um, the good news is, is that the access ways, which has always been the park's problem, either from Mead Park or from Old Stanford Road, will be improved, but not completely. Um, you may have seen uh, some notice that the uh, Cam Hutchins uh, pollinator garden was installed. Uh, there'll probably be a ceremony when they put a plate, uh, put a bronze plaque up uh, for it. Um, there are two more bird walks scheduled, November 17th and December 8th. Um, the good news is we're up to 116 birds identified, so that's a, a good step. Who's leading those walks, Frank? Uh, Frank Galloway. Yes. And they're they're pretty good. He's pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. and, he can, uh -huh. and he can call birds. He makes owl sounds <laughs> and other things that, that get him to move yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, so if, <laughs> if anybody is, uh, if you have a chance to join, it, it's, um, it's an easy walk. You meet a couple other people who are birders, and uh, Frank tells stories. Um, the Francis pediment is uh, fashioned, and um, uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, uh, the entire project has been funded by a donor. Um, the uh, draft history booklet, which is meant to be distributed at the time of the celebration, kind of uh, memorialize the, the past and then discuss the future, uh, the first draft of it has been um, Written and I'd be happy to uh, circulate it to all of you. Uh, for are you writing it? I I I created the outline for it. Uh -huh. Greg Riley, the former oh, yes. advertiser okay. uh, okay. editor. Yeah. Hey, is Greg that Riley. what you sent around? I think you sent it around already. I you? may have sent it around. I think you did. It, it, to me, it just seemed very wordy. It is wordy. It'll be and 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 well, the, the, I don't know if you saw the current draft. No, it still is. It is. It is of length, and it has to be then. Uh, sent to a copy editor to include photos, charts, graphs, and things like that. So it'll come out as a booklet, but it'll also, um, you know, it'll also be uh, used to get sponsors to support it as well. So it, it, it's a, uh, I, I think it's just a way to put a marker down, and it'll be online as well. So, so are you uh, going to send around that? Next I will send that next draft. So the uh, Francis Pediment. Mm -hmm. Do we or should we know the donor? I mean. Oh, uh, it's the Anderson Family Foundation, okay. uh, and it's Harlan and uh, Harlan and Lois Anderson. 
uh, in memory of them, uh, their daughter runs the foundation that ran out. Oh, okay. And will it be, will there be a plaque in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the plaque will, you know, refer to Francis of Assisi and the, uh, you know, uh, uh, make the instrument of your peace. And then down below it will be uh, Bristol Park Centennial Celebration 2024. Um, in, in, and then in memory of uh, at the bottom in the dedication. And it'll it'll be a 17 by 20 plaque put onto the front of a uh, a large piece of granite. So, okay. um, and then finally, uh, uh, the Land Trust and uh, Kevin Moynihan, the town, uh, signed the public-private partnership agreement where the Land Trust will become the stewardship partner and advocate uh, for Bristol Park. And um, it, it kind of designates what the responsibilities are. Um, it's it's sort of general. It, it doesn't get down to specifics. It's hard to project numbers going out, you know, 50 years or 20 years. It is severable by either party. Uh, but it does give um, Bristol a, uh, an advocacy group um, and it's much like uh, the garden club at Berwyn Park or the walled garden or uh, the Wavy Park in service of the So, and, and the things that the land trust can do that's much easier than the town or the town employees, you know, uh, uh, bird houses, bird feeder maintenance, um, birding walks, nature walks, things that are programmable, uh, that are within their programming that could be then introduced there. Um, and, and it should be uh, also noted that a, the chair of the Conservation Commission is ex officio on the board of the Land Trust. So that creates a Conservation so Commission linkage as well in terms of feedback groups. And I suspect that um, as chair of the Conservation Commission, the chair might attend four times a year instead of every other, you know, they meet 10 times a year, and that might be more than necessary. But that will be the. Uh, so what, you know, that'll be that's the you, right? But, well, it has been me, okay. uh, but going forward, when I step down from the commission, you'll elect a new chair. But for the land trust, it, oh, wait, the chair ex officio of the conservation commission, not an ex officio chair of the land trust. Right. No, no, no. The, oh, the I conservation see. commission chair okay. sits ex officio on the board of the land trust. I see. Is, is someone, when you were at the nature center, wasn't there a town employee or a town representative on the Nature Center board ex officio? Uh, we always had um, Bootsy and um, the um, first selectman. Right. So we so, always, we used- So this, it's, it's first, written- Mostly it's, the first selectman was um, who I worked with. Right, right. And it's, it's written so that it's a town official who sits on the uh, ex officio. So, my intention was the Conservation Commission chair would be the logical person. Um, if somebody, if the, if you think it's a, another person would be better off, you could, you know, say uh, Todd Declan, who's the director of Parks Director, could be an example of someone who might be on there. But I, I kind of like the Conservation Commission chair because the Conservation Commission oversees Bristol Park. Right, right. Is that online? Is what online? The agreement. Uh, good question. <laughs> What was that? My chair. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, it's not, but we should put it online and, and I'll make a note to Lola to uh, to put it onto the website. Okay. Uh, any questions or uh, concerns about Bristow? Just a quick question. Then. Um, the previous meeting, we talked about getting schools involved in the programming mm -hmm. for Bristow. I wonder if the Nature Center had any. I think I I think that that's something the land trust will do because it's centrally located. Um, if the conservation well, committee, got a, a, a Nature Center employee or part time, isn't it? Gallo. Frank Gallo is. He's supported by the uh, Friends of Bristol Park. Send a check to the Nature Center. To the Nature Center. Oh, I see. On his behalf, okay. and and that's meant to continue through mm -hmm. uh, September twenty four, and then it's up for discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that was done initially to get the birding walks done and bird advice right. and get us above 100. We exceeded that right. target. So right. it would be on with you. Right. But I think in the meantime, Frank is leading more and more birding tours mm -hmm. across New Canaan. Right. So we'll right. see what it makes right. it for the new um, Any other questions or thoughts on uh, Bristol? Okay. Um, open space and the plan of uh, conservation and development. Um, the, the library's nature and environment working group did submit a document to the uh, EOCD uh, players, that's SLR is the organization. And I thought we would take a quick moment and, and just let you know that um, if you haven't seen it, the survey is online. You saw it. it, had, it had, were you able to see it? I saw. I glanced through it at the meeting at the forum, but I didn't know it was online. Right, Susan. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it. I did. I picked up a copy of it. Oh, oh you I didn't get know a copy of it. You got a copy. You got one there. So, <laughs> I thought I had to read it. So I, I thought <laughs> I didn't I never leave any <laughs> that well. Um, I thought there were a couple of interesting things um, in, in terms of vision, and, and what I loved was, it says, rank the following terms of priority focus areas for New Canaan over the next 10 years, and number one, uh, uh, education, I don't think there's any surprise there, number two is roadways. No surprise, right? I mean, to be frank, our roadways are the worst they've been since I've been in town, for no fault of tigers. And, no, yeah. Just, yeah, between all the various uh, uh, utilities, getting yeah. things up, uh, but so and therefore and therefore um, funds are dedicated to roadways. Funds are dedicated to education. What's important was preserve undeveloped land for open space. Ranked number three. Yeah, that's a, that's a big mm -hmm. uh, uh, change. Mm -hmm. And if if you were to think about, and then I loved more biking and walking amenities historic. Mm -hmm. You know, there was this there, the conservation uh, items uh, you know came in three four and five mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, on the list um, that's pretty impressive and then the question would be so how does the town what does the town do if these are numbers three four and five and then you look at what does the town invest in these items you'll find out that it's you know it's 98.8 percent other than these items so mm -hmm. i think it's a leverageable tool for the conservation commission to continuing to, to continue to say where's the support for conservation from the town mm -hmm. so how do we make that point to SLR? Uh, well, well they, there, they, there'll be an implementation Will our committee be part of the implementation um, recommendations? I'm not sure how that's going to play out. That's an interesting question, right? It, it was last time. It was suggested to me because we were patterning this in the implementation section on the town of Cambridge, Massachusetts. So apparently, they, they did a draft. There. I mean, there is a draft, sorry, of their implementation strategy online. And the lady said we should just take a look. Well, I, I would say the, the question you made a brilliant point about three, four, five, right? I mean, it's kind of but push it. But how yeah. do but SLR is the draft, right? So SLR how do we, is the draft. How do we get to SLR? Well, that's important because I think, and I don't know who can look it up, but I believe on um, November 13th, which is a Monday evening. Is that the next, next Monday? Monday? Next coming this coming Monday, mm -hmm. SLR is hosting a discussion on conservation and open space. Uh, you, uniquely for me, I will of course be out of town. I uh, thought it was. Um, I think it was the 13th. Yeah, but I don't think it's conservation. Wait a minute. You think it's the 13th? Oh, yes, it is. Sorry. Yeah. Right. It's, yes. So no. is that the same kind of forum that we it, went to before? It's, it's, it's similar to the forum that I went to. Right. Less. Um, whatever it was. Yeah. And, and I got this ridiculous picture of me looking like Francis of Assisi with a you know, completely monk's head. Uh, did you see that in the advertisement? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. <laughs> Thank you for not mentioning. <laughs> uh, I would suggest strongly that all four of you, if possible, attend, and then and then address and and, and talk to SLR about. So if three, that's four, 13. five. Sorry, that's the thirteenth. Do we have a time? And then it's six thirty. It's in the evening, and it's here at town hall. Okay. 
There's a problem. Where are you? I'm going to have this guy. Have that online. Sorry, this one. Oh, it's um, historic, cultural, and environmental resources. The 13th. That's it. And it's at six o'clock, my mistake. Um, and it's a review of the relevant issues highlighted in the community survey. Brilliant. So, in case anyone out there is watching this uh, uh, replay, Monday evening, six o'clock, town hall. Uh, come, come, and 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 uh, make your voice heard with regards to open space, cultural resources, and historical resources in our town. That is the conservation. That is the big chunk of the conservation story, uh, uh, and and where where we can set some markers in ink uh, about how we would like to see the town progress in the coming 10 years. I mean, it's interesting that Ann and I thought, did you know that there was even happening? On right. Day. So I don't know what the message is. I'll reach out to the land trust and make mm -hmm. sure that they send some an email out to like mm -hmm. people uh, to do that this afternoon. Oh, that'd be brilliant. brilliant. Do you know who to get to? I'm talking. Talk to the town as well. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really helpful. Yeah. And I, I didn't, and I'm glad you mentioned that. I didn't uh, see the thing of this. So I, I thought the visiting gives us a tremendous opportunity uh, to talk about prioritization. Um, I think the other interesting thing about the uh, aggregate food pool is obviously the consultants were there to look at as well, but so was the planning and zoning. Subcommittee for the PSCB. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. And so were all the politicians. <laughs> it was an opportunity. <laughs> so, yes. I, I think the open space and natural resources, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure um, how to think about it. I mean, the, their statement is New Canaan is doing enough to protect. Oh, that was the question. Got it. And the takeaways. Uh, I think I think it's interesting in these responses to consider the people who actually took the survey that it was largely of an age cohort that had families and children mm -hmm. and I did a some of this for the TDAC folks but I think that the general opinion of that age cohort was everything is perfectly lovely here. I know it's a little bit. It was so many a bunch. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, that's what my take. I think, I, but I think that it, it's important to understand that that's who took the survey. Mm -hmm. So I think there were probably a lot of respondents who might have been a little more critical, uh, and or a little more vocal on what could be done. Um, whereas this group seemed to be pretty settled on the downtown is lovely. There's good lighting. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yes, there, there's a, um, if, if you, I, I think the, the, the cut or the, the segmentation I'd be interested in is those who have come here in the last 10 years and those who have been here they, they do that 15 or 20, 20 years or more, you, you get this, you know, people who've grown through it as opposed to just arrived to that, yeah. you'll, you'll get that segmentation. There, there are a lot of interesting cuts yeah. that you can do with this data. And, and the sample size was, 4,000. Yeah, sorry, 4,000. 4, no, I think they only had 20. 20 that's what they had. It was more in than 3,000. In, 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 their, in their survey results, they said they had. They finally got to get some They did get it. Apparently. I mean, that's what they I said. didn't say that. I thought 20. But I don't have the whole one yet. It was pretty. It was a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. But you see. But that, you're, you're, you're making a fair point. You don't. You know, it's self-selected. It mm -hmm. I think this was that there was a very high degree of satisfaction mm -hmm. in the And I, my takeaway was there's not a lot of fault with killing. There are people like, yeah, that was like, I, I, I mean, I people like to sit out, people love to still get friends. It's kind of like, let's not groom with a good thing. Of course, I focused in on the noise. Well, we're not bothered by noise. <laughs> right. I didn't have that. No. Right. But it's an educational thing. Maybe on our part, that noise is actually very detrimental. It's, it's also right. how that question is written. Yes. So, yes. Um, but maybe we could, uh, since you're not going to be at the Monday meeting, maybe we could develop some talking points um, uh, for those of us who are going. We can kind of target uh, some conversations. Uh, I, I, would, I, I would think that um, 
Yeah, you know, that big talking point about three, four, and five. Right. And what What does the town do uh, uh, with regards to that? And then there's also the, the whole other side, the sustainability piece, uh, uh, where to go. And I think if you if you walk through this survey, you will find things that you can you can uh, uh, latch onto. I did want to say with regards to noise that. Um, it, 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 you know, we always talk about light, dark skies for micro, in the migratory season. But if you realize noise, uh, what it can do is it also um, it, it also prevents birds from communicating. Totally, that was in my presentation. That was it. Right? <laughs> so, so I'm uh, uh, you, you realize when we were on a bird tour in Bristol Park and one neighbor is running a leaf blower. Right. You can't hear the you can't hear the bird call. No, no. So you know they can't warn each other for the no. they can't find each other no. through the exactly. tree tops. So I watch my cat. bird feeders and when those when those things start up in my neighbors, the birds disappear. Right. I don't know where they go. But they got they, they gotta hang out something else where they can very have, disturbing uh, to where they can get warned. Yeah, um, I think maybe if each of us take one of those three, four, and five flights and mm -hmm. kind of raise it. It's, Kind of emphasizing almost the same thing, right? They're all kind of, you know, uh, like kind of mm -hmm. rather than kind of giving each other direct light, like, mm -hmm. kind of each one grab, grab one, and then maybe the next person chime in. I'll, I'm mm -hmm. gonna dial in by Zoom, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna point. Okay, it, is that meaning maybe a uh, Zoom? Or? I assume so, but I do not know. I don't think the so. last one was the last uh, one, was. It's, it's unlikely to be so. Um, it, it would well, it would behoove you either to write in something, yeah. Um, or to uh, uh, ideally go there because it's the walking around, and talking to John Chris, talking yeah. to other members of the subcommittee, right, right. saying you know the, the, the conservation commission has some you know uh, feels that points three, four, and five need to be addressed right. more right. aggressively in the plan of conservation yeah. development. Well, there, are, of, yeah. there are a lot of details in those three yeah. items, and, and it's good. Yeah. And, and John, yeah. you should you should you know. Uh, 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 Lay in there. I mean, aquifer protection, I think, is huge yeah. and, and is huge long term. You know, mm -hmm. fresh water supply. You, you read what's going on in the world today, and then the, the big New York Times articles about aquifer depletion mm -hmm. and who's, who's sucking all the water out. It's a concern. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it jumped out in that survey. Yeah. Nobody is really aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. No, and, and, and we're sort of, you know, and it's always been the case. We've been so lucky with our water supplies. Right. But 70% of the land mass is on well water. Right. But we're looking now that two summers ago or last summer, you know, people were having to redrill their wells because yeah. it was a drought. Yeah. And then we had to have water piped in for the standard, but yeah. the water piped in from I don't know where, but they did. I mean, it was, it's, you know, we tend to like only think about the current, and believe that we're living only in the present, and we forget the past problems mm -hmm. that we've had. So, anyway, no, I was just going to say I think that the sort of it's been a privilege of being in the Northeast. Yeah, yeah. We have not had. We have multiple multiple river sources we have it's not like the west you know everybody's completely screwed mm -hmm. or our forest fires well uh, and again uh you know a good stewardship i mean we, we we're doing river testing to make sure we're not sending pollutants downstream into the long island sound um it, it's an intriguing um question mm -hmm. well we have three water companies operating out of the Cayman. yeah that, that's an indication in and of itself mm -hmm. uh but the, the and and finally most important is, and, and I think this is the biggest uh, uh, play, is the one, two, and four acre zoning is entirely designed to protect the aquifer. Mm. It really is. Well, I mean, it, in terms of, it went to Supreme Court, and that was the argument, which is, you know, th this is this is our aquifer. I mean, you, if you overdevelop it, you're going to run into problems. We can argue that, but mm -hmm. I think that was the cover. For other arguments well it was the one that it's the one that could be sustained yeah right and i would be uh, all for sustaining it so um just just my my uh i think smaller there. houses right less lawns well i'm um, more efficient appliances uh less lawn. there are a whole range of items that could help us uh become more sustainable because there's no data on total water consumption yes there is if you actually not not if, if 
each of these water companies is required to file. I forget what the document is called. It's very thick, and it's projections of water consumption in the past and in the future. And there's been an incredible decrease yes. in water consumption over the last 10 or 15 years. The industrialization. But, but it's well, and also that appliances. It better it, appliances. It doesn't include wells. That doesn't no, include because they, right. yeah, they, they have, have to. Right. Right. We have this big unknown, which is, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to sit with a very tiny straw, but I don't know if my neighbors have like six exactly. eight straws in there yeah. and, you know, run their sprinkler systems or what have you. You can um, see that. And, and, and another one that concerned me, and it had to do with uh, uh, planning in, in a planning and zoning meeting where a neighbor said, well, I want to put a pool in, it's next to uh, a, a conservation, you know, town east piece of land next to the Silver Mine River. And it occurs to me that um, when people empty their pools out, sometimes they just empty it right out into the wetlands. Oh, of course. Right? But isn't course. that problematic with the chlor chlorine? Yeah, and, and the, So I, I know that because um, one time I was walking on a land trust property and I was walking on a trail that I thought was, you know, mulch, and I took two steps and I was this deep in water. Mm. And I realized oh, the neighbor must have emptied his pool out drain it into the land trust, but then I thought, you know, I said, oh, well, I guess that's okay. And then I thought, well, no, that's got to be chlorinated water. That can't yeah. be good for the, yeah. the microcosms yeah. of the okay. So an, an interesting thought. Uh, how do you... not, not sure how, I, how, how we convert that. Well, I think the chlorine will naturally burn off over a period of time. So you could put in regulations about, you know, it has to be unchlorinated for extra number of weeks. And there you go. Mm -hmm. So that's a thought. Yeah. As yeah. you know, somebody that the planning and zoning can say you want a pool, great. You're gonna yeah. you know, right. either if you keep it filled, fine. If you right. empty it, right. you can have somebody pump it into a tank and take it with you. Know, but if you're gonna release yeah. it, yeah, you know, make sure that make sure that the chlorine has yeah. yeah. to us and you don't know, people don't like because then it gets you yeah. know get an algae. And but, there are new there are new appliances and things you can put in your pool that uh, mitigate having to put like too much. That's a good. That's a really good point. Right? Just a thought. Yeah. There could be a lot of things that we could suggest. It's also a very easy testing process, so you could actually do a, a water test. Yeah. To yes. Get a permit to empty your water wherever you want it. Right. Yeah. But this is also uh, an education mm -hmm. issue that you know hopefully we can address with our own communication director of the yeah. public at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, you're making me think of uh, this issue with um, neighboring properties. Um, pesticides. With pesticides. Downstream effects. All, yeah. Like, yeah, that, yeah. that's a bunch of things in the downstream mm -hmm. effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pesticides go directly into the aquifers. Yeah. Um, and, and whatever serves the wells. Right. Now, a lot of those things are already in the planning zoning regulations. So they're just not in the they're not, yeah. yeah, they're not brought up in the law. Right. Yeah. Well, and again, uh, you know, there's enforcement, self-enforcement, then there's neighbors enforcement, yeah. and then there's town enforcement. So there are right. levels of right. addressing it. There was this discussion with um, one of the members of the PNZ committee, I don't know who their name is, but um, as to how you have earlier intervention in, for example, the process of permitting a project. Mm -hmm. Why do they have come in with fully drawn plans and right. landscape designs and everything for you to just come and tell them that they can't do it? It's going to be very, very hostile. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have this discussion early on, mm -hmm. maybe they could get fast tracked, for example, which would be much cheaper for them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think there are a lot of ways to try to make the process a little more uh, congenial. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, people are much more ready right. to do what they know they right. should do, but it isn't going to be onerous. Right. And there's also relationships with the land trust, for example. Um, the land trust could be communicating with the public. Um, and we could help support that um, about what, what it is to be a good neighbor of land trust, wetlands. Uh, good point. So there was a very, very strange situation a couple of years ago in Norwalk, actually, where a pool got emptied out into the street. Wow. It happened to be a bit, a bit late in the season. Oh, I, I mean, quite late in the season, and the water froze mm -hmm. and turned that straight street into a skating rink, and it just caught it. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a, a 
you know, it, it, what, what's great about this is you can really brainstorm yeah. and cycle yeah. into right. a series of things. And the challenge for the POCD is to take these ideas and bring them together, you know, kind of right. uh, uh, where to go. I was involved in the last, as well as here, in the last implementation of plan of conservation bill, and it was a long process, you know, putting together all the details. Mm -hmm. um, so there are several iterations to it. It was once we get, you know, this meeting, that's going to be mm -hmm. the last opportunity we have to come up with plans yeah. and, and uh, recommendations. I think the implementation drive is way more important of than course. the document itself anyway. Totally. But, right. The, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, the document has to set the tone and the implementation has to have some kind of follow through. Well, I, I, I would hope that if three of you could attend on Monday. Um, you'll have chances to talk to other P the PSC subcommittee running it and how that and what the Conservation Commission role will be uh, as well. So, and Sarah uh, Carey seems very open to ideas and, and discussions, and hopefully, SLR. We'll get some good ideas from that uh, meeting. John, that might be, if you can't go, you might want to put something together with our okay. trees or mature yeah. trees or set a letter. They Take also, talk, talk. sorry, at the last session, um, they, they had a sheet like this where they were offering people, anyone who wanted to email them directly. Okay. Uh, they were asking, please let us know your thoughts over email. Mm -hmm. So um, I could try to dig that up and share it with the group. Oh, I'll try and find it. Okay. Was that was it through Sarah Carey though? I mean, I think she was the one that sent out sent it out. I'm, I'm not sure. We all got an email, I think, from her. Did we? <laughs> With so many emails. I think. <laughs> Why don't we? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got to see an email from Sarah Carey asking for comments and getting further. Let me see. Yeah, further guidance here. Sent around the dates. Um, Sorry, you were on. Do we continue? Yes, no, no. Right. Uh, just quickly, last point on uh, open space. Um, we did, and you should be aware that we did present the algorithm for putting uh, putting capital into the land acquisition fund uh, to the Board of Finance, and they said they would take it under consideration. Uh, which either means that we're going to seriously look at this or thank you, we'll mm -hmm. put it into our file we're not quite sure. and we're not quite sure what we're going to do next. And so, and again, the, the game changes, you have uh, a new first selectman, mm -hmm. selectman, or, you know, board selectman, uh, uh, where the prioritization will be. Um, I kind of got to the point where I think I pushed that as far as I could. Um, I would love to see it come to fruition particularly given points one, two, given points mm -hmm. three, four, and five, that's added ammunition to say, guys, look at yeah. this. How much do you put into education? How much do you put into roadways? How much do you put into protecting open space? And they'll say X, Y, and zero. So um, you use that as a cudgel uh, if possible, because it's not something they want to do willingly. It takes right. away right. the freedom. Right. So, um, and I'll certainly uh, be a voice for it, but in, under different in a different department. Um, anything else on open space with POCD? Then I'll, I'll move to um, item uh, six. Just Conservation Commission budget is there. You should be aware of it. Um, when do we think we'll hear from uh, uh, Earth Place, River Watch, for the uh, presentation? January. January. Right. January. So that'll be on the schedule. Okay. Yeah. 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 When you say hear from them, that's the presentation well, I, for Charles? Or? I, uh, Communicated with Nikki mm -hmm. recently, and that's why she sent that invitation to the December seventh uh, presentation. Um, yes, yeah, so and they're they're working on it now. I be, lost. So this is a presentation that they make on their results. Well, they have okay. So they have this. You know, they really educate, help educate these volunteers, student volunteers. I mean, it's a, I think it's a very good program. And I, I don't know that the Conservation Commission actually gets enough credit for the fact that we're supplementing the uh, science department of education in the school high school so we have with the 7500 because that goes to harbor watch harbor watch in turn trains these people supervises these people on test on water testing and then helps them develop 
presentation. And they're going to be giving a presentation on December 7th by invitation only um, of, of all their findings, the Harbor Watch river testing and the pond testing. Uh, and, but for us, they're going to give it in January because December is- yeah, So I, I suspect they'll have the presentation for the 7th and then roll it out yeah. yeah. in January. Yes. Um, if you haven't gone, it's fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's not far. I mean, it's uh, Earth Place up in uh, Westport. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's great to, you know, kind of tell the kids how great it is that you did this project. Right. And folks in. right. In fact, that's how the idea first came up, is I, I somehow walked in there and found out that there were new Canaan students involved in river testing. Right. So let, right. let's figure it out. Let, right. Let's do something. Right. All right. Well, I'll leave that up with you. Uh, okay. January what? January. Uh, okay. What are the January meetings? Well, no, the December 7th is, December 7th. is right. at Harbor Watch a presentation. It's by invitation only. And so they only invited Chris and me, but another person you, got to sure make sure we well, can get on. Because they, you, they, you, they, you, they, you said in the broader presentation. Is that part of that? No. no okay. There is a presentation yeah. just for us okay. as sponsoring in January. In, in January at our January meeting. But, but the, the bigger event is you know which includes other towns other rivers other yes. testing okay is is the set is uh, december 7th uh, which i think i may be away with so the busy uh, cycle um uh conservation commission organizational structure for 2024 i will come off at the end of the year i believe um there will be uh, uh the board of selectmen will nominate uh, a, a new member uh, all of you have to decide your continuity or not, how you want to, what, what you want to do. Is this also the two more commission that we'll get the two more commissioners? Is we, that can't two, we can't go from five to seven until we get a chart of division. And that will happen sometime in 2024. Don't know because they, they haven't decided. Separately. They set that up as a separate, a uh, separate initiative. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they haven't said it and they haven't confirmed oh, no. that they're going to do it yet. And it oh. takes a very long time. Yeah, it takes a year or two. So yeah, you're yeah. you're going to be five persons. Yeah. The question of whether you can have alternates. Yeah. Um, you know, it, again, you know, there's the charter and then there's how you want to operate until the charter catches up to it the way you operate. So I'm more in the view of it would make sense that if there are people who want to get in the queue or be on the conservation commission, they attend as alternates. And then, yeah. so and how then do we get convert. approvals to get alternates? So you could do unofficial alternates. You could do unofficial alternates, for instance. Yeah. You know, those, or work, yeah, play the forgiveness instead of the permission to yeah. say, I like that idea. Huh. And so I, I do know that there are two uh, uh, good people who would love to be involved. One of the two is likely to come in on, under my, when I step down, uh, the other person could also be a perfectly, a perfectly good as an unofficial alternate. And then, you know, maybe it can, uh, maybe it can, you know, develop out, but I'm going to leave that one to the incoming board of selectmen and, and to you all. On how that would play. But anyone can attend our meetings. I mean, you can yeah. tell any of these individuals they can all come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But if right. we give them the title as an alternate, yeah, it, yeah. it increases it, the but, likelihood that they can, you know, that they have agency with us. Right. But on the other hand, we're public so that that people would see that there's an alternate here as they're introduced as alternate. So mm -hmm. I don't I like I the fact I, I just I take your <laughs> point. <laughs> I think it's fine. I mean, it really is a good agency aspect to yeah. say, you know, uh, uh, we we think that we think it'll help us operate because we're trying to do more things, get more messages, and we're very narrow caps. You know, it's just just us. So um, that would lead me to the uh, uh, and Andy wanted to talk a little bit about communication strategy mm -hmm. ideas. So I would uh, turn it over to you. Great. I think I forwarded the um, the message from the communications team to everyone, and I wanted to um, get the commission's views before I take my next step, which I think is going to visit the communications team at one of their meetings. I understand request uh, attending one of their meetings to introduce myself and, and explain a little bit more about why we want to communicate directly with the public and what can't be communicated through the channel of the town. Um, and there are things that, you know, um, I mean, we're not going to send them a picture of a bird uh, to put out on the town, uh, you know, 
website, or, sorry, their, their social media feed. And also just share a little bit of my um, uh, background, working in uh, media for <laughs> years. And um, when it comes to issues of accuracy, which was one of the uh, points that they made, you know, I was uh, a research editor in charge of accuracy of major publications and, uh, and edited, uh, you know, I uh, developed uh, social media strategy and digital uh, strategy of, um, you know, multi-platform broadcasting and publication, you know, for uh, national broadcast and, and, and right. publication. So I think, um, you know, it's a great way for me as a volunteer it, for the town to make myself useful yeah. around I didn't get a, I didn't get a sense that they that they were objecting to the qualifications. I no, just no. felt that they yeah. needed to have some kind of control over what is a town entity communicating with the community. Sure, sure. But I, I think also just I don't think they know who I am. And so right. you know, for sure. For sure. You know, I think it's developing that relationship and also um kind of I agree with them that it's better for some of our messaging to come through the town uh, channels mm -hmm. and to be working with them right. and communicating, uh, especially when we're talking about policy or um, events or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, before I do that, I wanted to sort of get my thoughts from fellow commissioners about, uh, the, do you agree that it's important yeah. that we communicate directly with the public? Let me start. Okay. I, I think that's, I think we should have our own direct communication, but I think going through some central spot in government just rubs me the wrong way, right? Like, like we're the conservation commission and we're supposed to be kind of in charge of that. They don't, if the town doesn't like that, then they can change this. But um, just as a, as a matter of independence, whether what we might suggest is conflicting at times with what Tiger does as an example is um, you know that's that's yeah, right? yeah. That's, <laughs> right. um, that's kind of the whole point right so um, so I think we should have our own channel as a suggestion I think we should go with real concrete examples of what we might want to post right here are five examples of a bird watch or you know a website that talks about that really good that organization that does like the quiet that fantastic? fantastic I mean that's, that's, that's a reasonable a thing to do the quiet it's a Big organization right. about right. the lowest. Well, right, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's very much. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think links to um, other organizations, whether it's online or store or whatever, is great. I think you know. Uh, uh, just highlighting points in our minutes too. Yeah, who, yeah. Who in the community? Logs on and reads the minutes from all the yeah. oh, very few people. Yeah. So, yeah. But, so if you go, oh look at what they look at what yeah. we decided in our last meeting or something, yeah. you know that is beneficial to sure. you. Sure, I think we can also it. right. I think we can also feature the um, you know neighbors, residents who are doing great things that are aligned with our mission. Exactly. We, we we could do a hidden hidden gems of. Outdoor mm -hmm. a, a monthly monthly hidden gem, whether it's Bristow or Brown Sanctuary or you know people know way they people know our way right. But beyond that, right. I think a lot of people right. don't know the right. open space. Right. So we could do a paragraph and a picture. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like ideas like that. Right. I think. Storytelling. And yeah. Storytelling. Also informing. Right. But yeah. Storytelling. Yeah. At Southbury, the OCD had a full section of special places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love to do that. Any other thoughts? Uh, on you know before I well I would I would also suggest that um, uh, it, as you do this and if there's a message from the conservation commission something I I would, uh, was hoping to do but never got to was you can send notes to Planet and Canaan the Nature Center the Garden Club the Beautification League uh, the Land Trust mm -hmm. and they can add little little stories at the bottom of their newsletters very easy to cut oh, and paste you did some you did some yeah. I did do some yeah. of that but uh, I think that's a good idea as well in terms of getting us out of, through their lists and then maybe there's a link in there that gets them back to the conservation commission website mm -hmm. something like that 
Judge Stark iterated that we need to take advantage of all their memberships right. and because right. that's our core constituent. Right. It's not right. our, it's not where we have to go educate but it's, it's where we are. And then we have to think about more broadly how do you get it out to general education, whether it's UK and moms or other channels. Exactly. And share. Those are almost more important than having our own. I mean, it's important to have our own Instagram mm -hmm. social media oh. side. But going through all because those those newsletters or those you know weekly uh, weekly events you know having things posted there you know about frequency and and reach okay you know because the you know the land trust reaches a number of people and the Canyon Nature Center has a large list of that goes out so and they can do the same so we can, they, we can we can highlight their thing yeah, 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 more than that right yeah yeah. Really try, and I think this Nature and Environment Committee highlighted the importance of the green, what we call the green um, advocates in town, uh, to work together to collaborate, to be much more collaborative. Hi, John. Okay. 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 And one quick last point the minutes. You know, you can create a transcript through Zoom. Are you? Doing that, sorry, a Zoom recording. You can also have Zoom produce a transcript. Okay, okay, sure. Um, but, uh, we use Chat GPT to create the minutes. I'm kidding. <laughs> if I can be helpful, it is my AI. Doesn't yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all I have. That's all I have. Any other points of discussion? Who is this communication? I, I honestly am not sure who's on the team. I think that's one of the points of going is that you've got a reply from um, Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. 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 It's Tucker in our operations. It's Tucker, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll, you know, I'll request. Uh, I didn't, I, I'm do you want anybody? Do you want anyone to come go with you? Would love it. Yeah. Would you like to join? Oh, sure. When is this? Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to set it up. Make a request. Uh, is it? We'll find out. We'll say hello. <laughs> okay. If possible, try to be there on the 13th, walking around. I did my, I, I went to the last one and the sticker in there. I got the advertising ridiculously. Uh, picked up all of your stickers. Yeah. Should we close the meeting? Uh, I think we can. I think um, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, uh, take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second. Uh, it's uh, now um, 140 or 150 uh, Conservation Commission meeting of November 9th is now adjourned. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Turn it up. Uh, do we turn it off? Or? Okay, that's what you come back to do. This <laughs> is the town council having to leave the community. I don't know. Um, but I talked to Tucker and